What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and today we're going to be taking a look at Turbo Duskmane Necrozma GX. So Duskmane Necrozma of course has been a card that has seen uh, varying degrees of play ever since it came out back in Ultra Prism, most notably with Magazone though. But today we have no Magazone in this list as you can see, it's going to be just based around powering up our Duskmanes through different item cards that we have. So a really important card that Forbidden Light gave us was B-String. And everyone's been pretty quick to mention that Buzzle GX and B-String are kind of like a match made in heaven, but we can't forget there are other Ultra Beasts in the format, most notably here, Duskmane Necrozma GX. So like I said, we are foregoing Magnazone and just trying to power up our Duskmane uh, through our items to take knockouts every turn. So Dustman Across, if you guys aren't too familiar with it, has this incredible attack, Meteor Tempest, for three metal and a colorist who's 220, and you discard three energy from this Pokemon. So we can basically knock out everything relevant in the format with this attack. There are a few exceptions, like a Golisopod GX that uses Armor Pressed, or maybe something like a Metagross GX, uh, but most of the time, by and large, we are taking a one-hit knockout thanks to Meteor Tempest. Also, it does have a great GX attack in the form of Sun's Eclipse GX. For 3 metal energy, it does 250, but you can only use the attack if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. So Duskmane, like I said, it's a huge beat stick. It basically just blows through everything in the current format, as long as you're able to power it up, of course. That is going to be the big challenge. But like I said, thanks to B-String and Max Flixers, I think we will be able to actually do that here. And we are still playing some other Pokemon in this list. Let's go over them real quick. We have one Celesteela GX, and we're actually just looking at it basically for its Moon Press attack. For a metal and three colorless, it does 130, which doesn't seem that great. It's like, well, why would you want to do 130 when you can just do 220 with Duskmane? And the reason for that is because using Meteor Tempest on non-GX Pokemon can be very inefficient. Having to burn three energy every time you just want to take a single prize is just not the right way to go about things. You can wind up running out of energy, or maybe if you don't, even don't run out of energy, maybe you're forced into a turn where you have to reset up your board and take a turn or so to actually get more energy into play. So Moon Press is just a nice little attack at knocking out these one prize Pokemon without having to you know, expend any additional resources to do so. Now we'll mention Celesteel GX is actually an Ultra Beast as well, so that means we can abuse things like Beast String to get it powered up pretty quickly. And it actually does have another attack that is kind of worth pointing out, has Blaster GX. So for the same attack cost, we do 180 and turn all of your prize cards face up for the rest of the game. So it's a pretty nice GX attack. Most of the time we are just going to use Sun's Eclipse, but Blaster GX definitely is a nice one we can potentially fall back on as well if need be. So we're also playing one copy of Registeel for this Turbo Arm attack for a Metal Energy does 30. You attach a basic energy from your discard to one of your bench Pokemon. So just a nice little form of energy acceleration. Turbo Arm also can be sometimes half decent at picking off like one prize Pokemon like Alolan Vulpix or maybe Ralts or like Magnemites or things like that. Uh, like 60 HP basics basically. So that's the main reason we're playing it. Like I said, it's more for the energy acceleration, but sometimes the damage can be relevant as well. And speaking of energy acceleration, we are of course playing one copy of Solgaleo Prism Star for that amazing Radiant Star attack. For each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a metal energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So this is a fantastic move in the mid to late game. Once we've already burned through some energy, we can pivot into Solgaleo Prism Star and basically get all of our energy back into play, assuming our opponent has a pretty full bench. And we're also playing one copy of the Mew from Fates Collide for that Memories of Dawn ability. This Pokemon can use the attacks of any of your basic Pokemon in play, but of course you still need the energy to actually do so. So think of Solgaleo Prism Star for example. Fantastic move in the form of Radiant Star, but it has this annoying 3 retreat cost. So sometimes Mew actually can be a better method of using the attack since Mew has a 1 retreat cost, which is pretty nice. Of course we can also copy things like Turbo Arm, and we do have uh, actually another Duskmane Necrozma in the deck which we can copy as well and Mew is psychic type so that means we can actually hit a few things in the format for weakness as well if need be. 
And like I just mentioned, we also have one of the Baby Dustmade Necrozma back from that uh, like collector's chest lunchbox thing that came out not too long ago. We actually did an opening of that product on the channel too. So if you guys want to get a look at how to actually get this card, I will have a link to that video uh, as well. But we're playing this card mainly for its first attack, Dusk Shot for a Metal Energy to 60 to one of your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. And it's not affected by weakness or resistance. So this attack is kind of half decent. So in the early game, we can pick off, uh, you know, maybe some stuff, maybe hide behind, maybe like an awkward Pokemon our opponent has in the active spot and just kind of snipe around on their board and soften up things while we're starting to get some energy on our Dusk Main Necrozma GXs instead. Also does have another attack, Rusty Claws for two metal and a colorist is 100 plus 100 more if our opponent has exactly one prize card remaining. So like I said, Dusk Shot is kind of the main attack we're looking at here, but sometimes Rusty Claws can come in handy. Dustman Necrozma is actually an Ultra Beast as well, so it can abuse Beast Ring. So maybe in the mid game, if you have an extra Beast Ring at your disposal, you can power up this Dusk Main and kind of threaten a Rusty Claws uh, maybe on the following turn if your current attacker gets knocked out or something like that. One copy of a Ranker for this ability instruct. So one thing uh, that is actually kind of a double-edged sword about this deck is Dustmane and Crossman GX can take prizes pretty quickly, which means you are going to be susceptible to things like N in the mid to late game. So having instruct is kind of nice at making sure that you are N proof, lets you draw until you have three cards in your hand. So like I said, really nice in the mid to late game once our opponent starts putting us at a lower hand size. Then two copies of Tapu GX, of course, to round out the list with that Wonder Tag ability. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Pretty straightforward stuff for our supporters. We're playing nine draw supporters, favoring a high count of Sycamore here, just because we are an all basic deck. Uh, we don't play too many copies of N, like I just mentioned too. We do take prizes pretty quickly, but we still want at least one or two copies, uh, just in case we need it for ourselves as well. Three Gooseman to choose what we want to take knockouts on, and also one copy of Palpad. So I originally had four Guzma in the list, but I opted for the copy of Palpad instead because it lets us get two supporters from our discard pile back into our deck. So it can sometimes effectively function as a fourth Guzma in certain situations, but also we can get back draw supporters and things like that as well. So going on to the rest of the deck, pretty straightforward stuff for Ultra Ball here. One Super Odd, or playing Super Odd over Rescue Stretcher because Super Odd does give us the flexibility of getting energy back into our deck, which is going to be good because we actually can run out of energy in this deck since we have to discard it every turn to attack. Uh, two Nest Ball, we aren't playing Bridget or anything like that, just because we are trying to go for speed here. We really don't want to have to use Bridget to get set up. We'd rather just play Draw Supporters. Uh, that way we can continue to play things like Max Elixirs and things like that. So having Nest Ball in the deck will give us a few more outs to grabbing the exact Pokemon that we want. Uh, like I just mentioned, four Max Elixirs in the deck just to get our energy into play a little quicker. Look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy you find there to a basic on your bench. But even though we're playing four Max Elixir, we are playing four copies of Beast Ring as well. So you can only play this card when your opponent has three or four prize cards remaining, but you search your deck for two basic energies and attach them to one of your Ultra Beasts, then shuffle your deck. So once our opponent knocks out our first Dusk Maiden Necrozma, we can kind of go crazy with these Beast Rings and just ensure that we have energy in play for the rest of the game. I originally actually had a lower count, but if you whiff the Beast Ring on that, you know, that, that small window that you have to activate this card, it's kind of a dead card. So I was like, you know what? This is an all basic deck. We kind of have the space to play for. Let's just go for it. And we really don't mind seeing a lot of these in our hand on the turns that we can use them because even if we only need four energy to attack, it doesn't hurt to actually pile on extra energy onto Dusk Mains in case of a Meteor Tempest the following turn as well. Two copies of Field Blower just to discard our opponent's tool cards in stadiums mainly to get rid of things like float stones, which make it easy for our opponent to retreat and things like that. Also getting rid of choice bands will sometimes help ensure that our dusk mains can live for like a turn longer. And then just four copies of float stone to round out our list. So everything in this deck has a very awkward retreat cost outside of something like Mew, but everything else has like a three or four retreat cost. So we definitely need to add some mobility to this deck. And then to round out the list, 15 Metal Energy, 
probably seems like a lot, but between max hooksers and B strings, it's actually pretty easy to run yourself out of energy. I've had a few games actually where I've only had like one energy left in deck, but 15 is actually kind of nice because you basically always hit them off your max hooksers, uh, just as an example. But like I said, between max hooksers and B strings, we need a lot of energy in this deck to actually uh, activate these cards. But let's head over to the bow portion of the video. I'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, so we have ourselves a game here, and we do lose the coin flip, which is not fun, unfortunately. Uh, but you never know, sometimes with this deck, you can have an explosive turn one where you get a bunch of elixirs going and things like that, so I'll have to see what happens. And, uh, you know, Subway Prism Star, actually not the worst starter in this situation if we're going second, because we can actually toss away these metal energies and use Radiant Star on the first turn. As you can see here, our opponent is playing Bridget, so that is going to allow us to get some more energies out of the discard pile with this attack. And okay, we see some Zeruas and a Rowlet. So Zorark Deciduous is not a deck that's been very popular in recent months, so I was expecting to go against this, but let's see. We discard, I think we just get rid of both the metal energies. That seems pretty safe. We could go for a Lele or something, but we already have an N in hand. I think it might be better just to grab an attacker. So I'm thinking here, we go for the Celesteela, usually not an attacker I want to see, but our opponent has this Latios in the active spot, and it's actually not a Pokemon we really want to waste three energy to knock out with a Duskmane. And here we actually have a Duskmane, we could bench it. I'm just kind of worried, what if our opponent has like a Guzma? That would be kind of annoying. But you know what, I think we're safe. Because our opponent, they don't even have any Zora Arcs in play, I think they need actual draw supporters this turn to get powered up to actually get their board going so i think this like i said i think benching the dusk main is actually safe in this particular situation and here we're just going to do radiant star getting a couple energy onto this celesteel gx so we are going to be able to use a moon press next turn and knock out this latios if need be so your opponent is going to get their first zor arc up and running Um, uh, they definitely just want to get evolution set up this turn. Now, I'm really not too worried about this Latios. They could uh, commit a DCE to it and, you know, just start using Breakthrough to put on some pressure, but this Solia Prism Star is actually resistant to it, so, uh, you know, I really don't think this Latios is that big of a threat right now. It's just kind of an annoyance, but here our opponent is going for Guzma. Are they going to bring it? Yeah, they're going to bring up the Solgaleo, or not Solgaleo, but the Dustmane Necrozma. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> to be fair, I do think the odds were on our side here. Like I said, our opponent didn't have any evolutions in play. They needed a lot just to uh, get their board set up. So <laughs> I think the play was still safe given the circumstances. It just kind of happened to backfire. So but next time, I don't know, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll hang on to the Dustmane and Krozma. But here we'll Max Luxor and we'll fail it, unfortunately. And we also with Floatstone. So this is, this is definitely a pretty, pretty terrible turn for us here. And now we're in kind of a bad spot because our opponent can knock out this Dustmane. We have this Celesteela GX in play, which is kind of a crappy attacker it's not really someone i want to use against this zorark gx like i said i was kind of working under under the assumption our opponent was going to be uh you know keeping this latios in the active and just trying to put on pressure with that now if we do get guzma we could use blaster gx on a lele to take two prizes so that is an option at the very least and you know i guess another silver lining is even if they take a knockout on this dusk main they're actually going to activate Beast Ring for us, which is going to be huge because that would allow us to actually power up this other Dusk main and respond with that. So let's see, I'm not sure what all they have in hand, but oh, they're going to bench a Layla here. And I'm actually really okay with this just because this deck, I think, really needs two Decidueyes in play. If they only have the one, I think taking knockouts on these Dustmane Necrozmas are going to be a little bit tougher. Because with a full bench and a choice band, Zorark swings for 150. With the two damage counters that the Sidui allows our opponent to place, that's 170. So they actually can't even knock out a Dustmane Necrozma in the same turn that it comes down. So 
I think that might have even been a little bit of a misplay putting the 20 damage on this Soul Wave Prism Star. Okay, so we're going to get a Metal Energy. Yeah, we just attach that there, and we go for the end. We could play Super Odd, but I really don't want those other cards back in deck. Oh my god, this is... This is not our game so far, guys. <laughs> We've definitely had some really awkward, uh, you know, turns so far. But here, we're at the very least going to field blow away this choice ban. And I um, guess it's kind of rough. We just have to retreat and I think use Celesteel GX. We could use Blaster GX potentially. But honestly, I really don't want to use our GX move if we're not going to take a knockout. Especially because in the past, these Decidueye or decks have played things like Max Potion. So I would hate to, you know, use our GX move and then our opponent have a Max Potion or something like that. So either way, we have to two-shot this guy. I'd rather just preserve our GX move. Here we're going to see an Evo Soda getting out another Zor arc. And so let's see... They're going to do this turn. I don't think we're in any danger of being knocked out. I don't think there's a combination of cards that exists for our opponent to knock out the Celesteela. And so here we're going to see a Feather. Where are they going to put it? Okay, they're going to keep putting it on the Solgaleo Prism Star. I'm actually completely okay with that. Like I said, uh, it will prevent these Dusk Mains from being knocked out as easily. Okay, so here they're going to attach to uh, Decidueye. And I'm Kind of okay with that. Oh, and here they have the max potion, so really happy I did not actually uh, waste our GX move. And here our opponent is going to end us, thankfully, our hand was trash. Okay, and this hand is substantially better, and here our opponent is going to hollow hunt. It's that GX move lets them get three cards out of their discard pile back into their hand. So I'd imagine we'll probably see that double colorless energy they just discarded. Uh, beyond that, not exactly sure. We'll have to see. So Max Potion, Guzma, and Double Color Synergy. Max Potion, I can promise you, won't be that useful in this matchup from here on out. Especially since we finally have Beast Ring in hand. So here we'll use Beast Ring. Since our opponent is still at four prizes, it's going to power up this Dusk Main Necrozma. And here, just what else do we do? We have Ultra Ball. So I think we actually just set up another Dusk Main Necrozma. We have another Energy in hand. So yeah, what do we do here? We... Another thing I'm wondering is, do we hard retreat the Celesteela and preserve the Floatstone, or do we just, or we, do we attach the Floatstone and save the energy on it? Um, hmm. So, I mean, at the, well, at the very least, let's start with this. We'll grab our Duskmane here. Well, actually, okay, we definitely had a suboptimal play here uh, just now. I would definitely should hang on to the Sycamore instead of the Cynthia. Uh, I, I remember thinking at the time I wasn't sure if I was going to commit to the Floatstone play or not. Um, so because I did, Sycamore definitely would have been the better play here. So one less card that we got to draw. But nevertheless, I think we're still in a good spot despite that. We had another Beast Ring, so we're in a fantastic spot because we can retreat into this Dusk Main. We can use Sun's Eclipse GX to take a knockout here, doing 250, knocking out this Decidueye. Next turn, we can attach just one more energy to this active to knock out a Zor arc. And from there, we just need one energy on our other uh, Dustman Necrozma GX to close out the game. So our hand was completely dead there. Had our opponent not end us, I think we would have been in a much scarier spot. So let's see what our opponent can do. I really don't think there is... They would need a lot here. I think they actually probably need to attack with Latios is bad is that that probably seems i think that's what they need to do here they need to force us into a seven prize game and start softening up these dusk mains here so if our opponent can get like a choice band down on this latios and start using breakthrough on our dusk mains and they can get a decidueye and play next turn i think they'll be in a bit of a uh you know a half decent spot to potentially come back into this now, of course, they don't know that I have this Guzma in hand. Oh, and they have Guzma. They're going to bring up this Celesteela. And they're going to attack into a Zorak. I'm actually completely okay with this. Because we can hard retreat the Celesteel if we really want. We have Floatstone as well. Um, I think our opponent definitely should have gone the Latios route, forcing the 7 prize game here. I think that would have been much, much better. And that would have softened up my uh, Dustman Necrozmas to a point where like a Choice Banded uh, Zor Arc with the Decidueye 
uh, can knock out a Dusk main. So I definitely think that was a big misstep from our opponent here. So what do we do for the rest of this hand? Can play Nest Ball. I don't know what we really need here. Actually, I think what we can do here, we can play Ultra Ball. We can actually grab uh, Lele and threaten like a Guzma to like for the game here. We already have a Guzma anyways, but at least this way we can get rid of some resources we don't need anymore and have a Lele just in case we need a draw supporter or you know, wh whatever it might be. Really just trying to thin our hand out though in case of an end, that's the big thing. So here we will hard retreat the Celesteela. I don't think we're gonna wanna attack with it for the rest of the game. And we have a, a float stone just in case our opponent does go for like a Guzma or something like that. And yeah, we just meet your Tempest here. All we need is a single... Yeah, all we need to do is use Meteor Tempest, and from here all we need is a single Metal Energy, and we can knock out whatever GX our opponent might try to promote. So we get a Guzma and a Metal Energy, so even if we get End, our opponent is putting in cards back into our deck that we can actually use. So I have to say, guys, that I feel really good about the spot that we're in. We have kind of a sketchy opening here, but now I think we're in a pretty uh, commanding position. And like I said, I think our opponent definitely misplayed there. Uh, you know, not going aggro Latios. I think that would have been a much better play here. So your opponent's going to go for a Cynthia. That is not an end, so we have game. I don't know if there's anything our opponent can do to prevent it at this point. They would need, like, some crushing hammers or something crazy like that, and I don't think our opponent runs anything like that. So here we're going to see 20 come down on this Duskmane Necrozma and 120 to this active. So... All we have to do is attach this Metal Energy, throw down the Float Stone, and we can use a Meteor Tempest to take the final knockout here. So, bam, knockout, one last Zor Arc, and that is going to be the game. So, like I said, kind of a sketchy start, but with Beast Ring, we were able to very quickly jump back into this game and set up these Dusk Mains to close out the game. But let's try another game and see what we can make happen here. So here our opponent has a Fighting and Dark deck box. So this could be a couple of things. I think probably the safest assumption is Zorark Lycanroc. Now of course it also could be like Zorark Lucario or even like Zygarde uh, Zorark or something like that. But I think Zorark Lycanroc is the safest assumption. Okay, and here our opponent is going to Mulligan. And from the looks of it, it did look like a Lycanroc deck. And yes, we definitely would like those Mulligans. And do we bench the Oranguru? I think we do, because if our opponent Guzma's on first turn, they're probably in a position to lose anyway, so... Yeah, I think we're in a fine spot here. And our opponent opens a Mewtwo, so that's definitely not what uh, poor little Mew wants to be staring down on the first turn. So your opponent is going to bridge it, and this is a Zorark Lycanroc deck, so just kind of as I expected here. And her opponent is going to Ultra Ball as well. Now, one thing we actually could potentially make happen here is if we can get ourselves an Ultra Ball and also find the Solgaleo Prism Star, we could potentially get like a crazy Radiant Star play, but I don't know if we're going to have access to it. I'm just thinking, do we attach to Mew? But I think we probably shouldn't here just because Mewtwo would be able to knock us out for a DCE. And right now, if we don't attach, he's only hitting us for 40, so... All right, so this hand is not the best. We do have a Dustmane Necrozma, have a Metal Energy, so kind of just a modest little first turn here. And here we just have to pass. So our opponent does have the Double Colorless Energy, so as I kind of expected here, uh, really happy we didn't attach to the Mew, otherwise it would be knocked out. Now, we still could get knocked out to, like, a Kukui or something like that uh, if our opponent does play it. I think most of our Arc and Rock decks play at least one, so that could have been an option. But here, our opponent just went for the Cynthia, so I'm fine with that. It's going to give our Mew one more turn to survive here. And we have a Nest Ball as well, so what do we do here? We could... Actually, what I kind of want to do here is I might get out the... I could go for Registeel, but we don't even have any Metal Energy in the discard pile, I don't think. Hmm. Actually, what I think I want to do here is, let's put Registeel back and we can actually grab this baby Dustman and Crosma. Because our opponent has this Zor Arc in play, and what we can do here is just uh, attack with this guy. Our opponent doesn't really have a great way to deal with that. 
So it's going to force them into to kind of a weird spot, I think, uh, to kind of deal with this thing. And we have a Max Luxor ready to go as well, but unfortunately our hand is trash. But you know what? I think we're still in okay spot. We could actually use Encounter to grab a Lele, but I think honestly we have the time. We can just sit back and use Dusk Shot and just try to pick off this Zorark GX from, from afar here. So we'll do 60 there. And like I said, this does mean the Crossman is kind of awkward to deal with. Our opponent would need like a double Colorless Energy and a Kukui uh, to knock us out. And I'm still not even sure if they play Kukui, so I think we're honestly probably safe here. So let's see what they're going to get. If they do get like a double Colorless Energy and a Lycanroc, that actually could be kind of annoying for us. Because then they could like bring up this Dustmane Necrozma and start getting like, um, you know, a couple early hits into that. And they do have Lycanroc, so let's see what they're going to opt to go for here. Going to bring up the Mew. I'm actually completely okay with that. And they did have Kukui. Interesting. Okay. So I'm actually really happy that they used it because now they're going to have to commit like a double puzzle uh, to being able to reuse it if they do decide to. So here we just promote this Dustmane Necrozma. And, hmm. Yeah, I guess we just attach to this, this Dustman. We could actually go for like a Sun's Eclipse GX here. But I really don't want to use that one just on Mewtwo. It just, it just kind of feels like a waste. I don't know, maybe we should though. Because like we don't have anything to work with. But, I don't know guys. I Let's just, um, we'll see what happens. So here we're just going to keep sniping this Zorark, putting some pressure on it. So hopefully it'll force our opponent into dealing with this Dustman. Actually, I would really like it if they were able to knock out this guy because then we could bench another uh, Duskmane and actually use that B-string we have in hand as well. So let's see what our opponent is going to go for. Now, if they... Hmm. Okay, they are going to get double Carlos down on that Zorark, and here they have double puzzle. Ugh. So that is no doubt going to spell bad news for us here. Oh, okay, going for Time Ball and Evo Soda. So if I had to bet, they're probably looking for a Lycanroc, and dang, they, they did get the dreaded double tails, but they still have another Zorark they could get in play here and maybe dig for a Lycanroc. Because if they are able to get the first hit in on this Dustman Necrozma, I think they are going to be un in, unfortunately, a half-decent spot. So they're going to get down a Choice Band, and they have Guzma. That also works. No need for Lycanroc, apparently. But the good news is we can at least make use of our GX attack to get two prizes here. Oh, and we get Ultra Ball. That's actually interesting. So what do we do here? We could go for a Lele. I think that is an option. We could go for a Sycamore and try to get set up. Um, we could also potentially go for Guzma. I do think that is also a play worth considering just because if we attack into this active, then, then you know, all that damage we've done with this baby Duskman will kind of be wasted. So I don't know, maybe, maybe this is getting a little greedy. Not sure, but let's let's go for it and see what happens here. We also have a Ranguru, so we can actually draw some more cards in the process if need be. So we'll get down the Float Stone as well. That'll let us get some more cards uh, with Instruct here. We can play Super Odd. And we have that Guzma, so let's bring up Lycanroc. I think that's going to be the play here. Now, we really need to get down another attacker. That's the only thing I'm dreading about the situation that we're in here. Hey, and we actually hit the Dusk main, so I think we got a little bit lucky there, but <laughs> hey, I, I will take it. And yeah, we'll definitely get down. Yeah, we'll get down energy there, and then just retreat. And we can use Sun's Eclipse GX, knocking out this 
uh, like in Rock GX. So we get two prizes, we get a Beast String and a Cynthia. Okay, two very good prizes actually. So even if this Dusk Main does go down, we will have Beast String ready to go. Okay, so here our opponent is going to get an energy down on that Rock Rocket, and they do have Field Blower, which is definitely annoying. We definitely want to keep our free retreat. Uh, free retreat options open if at all possible. And so let's see. Now one thing I do think is a little bit curious, our opponent did promote Zorark GX, which I think might be a little bit of a misplay because if I'm not mistaken this Mewtwo actually could have knocked us out because Psychic does 20 plus 20 for every energy on your opponent's active, so minus the resistance. They're doing 60, which actually would have knocked us out. So. I do think that was a little bit of a misplay on our opponent's part here. So they're going to trade away that Mew. Definitely seems like a good card to get rid of in this matchup. Getting rid of an end. Definitely a card I want to see hit the discard pile. And so we're going to get knocked out with Riotous Beating. So here I think we just promote this Dusk main uh, just because we have B-String ready to go. And we actually top deck a Metal Energy, which is pretty nice as well. So here we can get ourselves two Metal Energies. We'll power up this guy. And we'll instruct for one before we play the Sycamore. And well, we could play the Cynthia and try to keep the Metal in deck to make Max Hooksers work better. But here, I think we just need to set up our next turn. Oh, and this hand is not good at all. <laughs> um, like, I kind of want to play the Nest Ball here. But at the same time, I don't want our opponent to be able to knock us out with a Lycanroc. So right now, if we leave our board the way it is, Dangerous Rogue is only doing 150. So it's going to force them to have a couple of extra pieces if they want to knock us out with a Lycanroc. But if our opponent does whiff the knockout, that is actually one more turn that we're going to have access to B-String. Okay, so our opponent is going to go for a Lycan Rock. What are they going to do? Hopefully pull up something else. Oh, just going to leave the Dustman active and go for the end. Oh, but they have Diancy Prism Star down. Okay, so yeah, we're, we are officially in a really bad spot, guys. I'm kind of regretting not getting the floatstone down on something, because now we're in a situation where it's going to be a little bit hard to close out this game without, uh, you know, floatstones and max elixirs and things like that. But one thing actually we do have going for us, we actually have this baby dustmane necrozma on the bench. If we can get an attachment and a max looks or two we actually just win because it will hit for 200 since our opponent is going to go down to one prize here so i think we just promote the lele that is i think the safest thing or that's the thing that's in the least danger of being knocked out here Ugh, and just a guzma that is a terrible top deck so here we have to i think we have to attach and just pray we get something good uh here and our opponent's hitting us with the well played which is not what i want to see Okay, we will get a Lele. That's actually a great top deck off of this Instruct. So let's go for the Sycamore. Do we have? We have three Max Elixirs left in deck and three Floatstones. We can actually pull this one off, guys. Come on, Floatstone Max Elixir. Floatstone Max Elixir. Max Elixir. And no Floatstone. Well, I hate to say it, guys, but I have a feeling that's going to be the game because our opponent... If they get down one more energy, they're going to be hitting for, what, 110 base, uh, 130, 150. So if they get down either a strong energy or a different energy in a choice band, we just lose. And I think our opponent still has access to um, to Puzzle of Time, if I'm not mistaken here. So here we'll Ultra Ball, we can get rid of uh, these two. Actually, probably should have gotten rid of B-String. Pretty dead card at this point. But um, at this point, I really don't even know how much it matters. I guess we bench the the Dusk Main. It doesn't hurt anything at this point, I guess. Because we lose to Guzma no matter what, so. And does our opponent have... Oh, 
we're seeing the puzzles of time come down so no matter what i think we just lose here uh we had i think just a big whiff that last turn had we hit the max hoaxer and had a float stone we would have been in a good spot but here you can see our opponent has the guzma they had the uh strong energy okay i don't know why they needed the guzma but that's that's fine i guess <laughs> So yeah, they had the choice band and a strong energy. So yeah, no matter what, we were going to be knocked out here. So we unfortunately narrowly lose that game, guys. We almost had it. Like I said, if we just hit that float stone and the max hooks, we would have been in a good spot. But, you know, I don't want to end this video on that note. Let's try this one more time and see if we can make it happen. And here our opponent has some Eveltal sleeves. So I don't know how much that is going to tell us, but could be some sort of dark deck potentially but I'm not gonna hold my breath on that one and it's gonna be Tapu Bulu okay this is kind of an interesting matchup I feel like because they just kind of nuke us every turn and we nuke them every turn so this actually might be a pretty quick game okay and we actually hit the Dustman Necrozma that's definitely good so we have a nest ball here what do we get I think we get this yeah, I think I like going for the Dusk main Necrozma here. Could go for a Rangaroo, I think that's an option as well. Hmm, what do we do, what do we do? Yeah, I think this is fine. And yeah, we can just attach the Registeel and play a Cynthia. And we hit Max Lux, which that's pretty good as well. And it does work, so that's fine. So we can retreat this Mew and just start using Turbo Arm and start putting on some pressure on this Tapu Bulu. Uh, one thing that's nice about Registeel is that it has 130 HP, which means our opponent is going to have to actually discard their energy or burn their GX attack uh, to knock out this Registeel. So your opponent is gonna get Vickable online. And I'm not really too worried about it. Even if they knock out this Registeel, we can actually attach a Metal Energy to our Dusk Main. And since we have Mew on the bench, we can actually uh, set up to where we have free retreat if we hit like a Max Luxor or something. Uh, we'll be able to respond and knock out this Tapu Bulu. So the big question here, are they going to burn their GX attack? Okay, here we're going to see a Bridget, so it's <laughs> uh, t like a turn too late there, but nevertheless, that is going to help them get set up a little bit. And they, it looks like they play the Octillery in this list, so that could be a little bit problematic. That might eliminate the possibility of like uh, really p like powerful late game ends and things like that. So here we're just going to see a Nature's Judgment Going for the 180, discarding their energy, I'm fine with that. You know, burn that energy, force force my opponent to, uh, you know, expend extra resources to deal with these, uh, like small, like one prize attackers. So here we can get down the energy and do we play the Ultra Ball? I kind of thinking we do here because we need, we really desperately need a Max Luxor. So let's get rid of a Guzma and an N, and let's grab this Lele. Or not lately, uh, a Rangaroo. <laughs> My bad, guys. Uh, so that'll help us actually dig a little bit if we whiff what we need off of this end. And we did whiff, so I guess it is good that we got the Rangaroo here. So let's get down another Dusk Main. We can play Nest Ball. I guess we can grab. I guess we can grab Silver Prism Star, or we could get the. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, we can get down Float Stone, burn this Ultra Ball, fail it, and we really need Max Hooks are off this Instruct here. Plenty of energy, just no, <laughs> unfortunately, just no Max Hooks. So what do we do here? We can retreat, and unfortunately, I think we're just going to feed our opponent this Solgaleo Prism Star. I uh, really want to keep Mew as a free retreater as an option throughout the course of this game. And also, Soul the Prism Star is going to force our opponent to have to burn some more energy. So if we just left Mew in the active spot, uh, they could have just uh, used a Nature's Judgment without discarding the energy. But now they can have to, now they're forced to actually discard the energy. They can't even use their GX attack if they want to knock this guy out. So at the very least, like I said, guys, if we're not taking knockouts, oh man, but they have Guzmos. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So they just need a choice band 
and then they can knock us out with nature's judgment oh but they i don't know if they forgot how much hp dustmane has but okay so yeah we are in a fine spot now we can actually just attach uh this energy and use sun's eclipse gx or we could yeah yeah we just go for the sun's eclipse i feel like there's no reason not to here so that's a huge misplay from our opponent. Again, I don't know if they just forgot how much HP we had or what, but now we're in a spot we can take the first GX knockout. And our opponent is on odd amount of prizes. So right now they are forced into a seven prize game. It's almost like they haven't even taken a knockout yet at this point. So from now on, I can actually just knock out two Tapu Bulus and win, but our opponent has to knock out two Dusk Mains and something else. Okay, so they are going to use Energy Recycler, getting back some of that energy they had to get rid of earlier. And uh, the one thing that is a little bit unfortunate, we can be knocked out just from a Horn attack, but honestly, I'm kind of fine. We have Beast String in hand ready to go. We have Sycamore. Uh, we actually have Field Blower too, which is kind of relevant. We can get rid of this Float Stone. So honestly, guys, I think we're actually in a fine spot here. And here we're going to see a horn attack and knocking out this dusk man, like I said. But like I said, not really too worried about it. I think we're in a good spot here. And okay, so we have Max Flexor. We do hit, which is nice. We can go for Beast Ring. And then we also, yeah, we still have a Metal Energy in hand as well. So yeah, we're in a good spot here. What would actually be fantastic if we could get ourselves another dusk main with another beast ring powered up this turn that would actually be perfect so yeah we just stick more here let's see what we can make happen and nice we actually hit both we have the ultra ball so we can get rid of i think we can probably get rid of lele here because we have sycamore and we get rid of hmm I think we could probably get rid of Floatstone or Guzma. I think either of those seem good. Like, the energy is also like kind of expendable, but I I kind of want to save that to guarantee an attachment for next turn as well. So yeah, let's get rid of those two. I like that. We have Palpad, so we can always get back Guzmas if we need to at some point as well. So yeah, we just grab the Dusk Main. Ooh, actually what we could have done is we could go for could go for the baby dust main because if they knock out our active one that we're going to have then but actually no this is probably better I, th I think it's better because if our opponent were to guzma up the baby dust main after we burned all of our energy then we would actually be in a terrible spot so this is actually i think just a little bit safer and so now next turn all we're going to need is a max fixer and this attachment and we're going to be in a good spot to just win the game here so we'll take a knockout on this bulu what do we get metal energy and beast ring i have a feeling after this or after our opponent's next turn here this beast ring is not going to be doing too much for us uh, but nevertheless at least we have the energy like i said we just really need max fixer to guarantee uh, a knockout next turn okay so our opponent is going to play a stretcher Getting a couple of Tapu Bulus back. I really don't think they need them in the deck at this point, just because one more Bulu knockout loses them the game anyway. So I think it would have been better just getting one on the bench. That way they didn't have as much like clumping up their deck. So let's see what they're gonna do here. They have the Vicavolt in the active spot, so that even like kind of leads me to believe that they're gonna try to attack with Vicavolt instead. Hmm. And one thing, we haven't seen a choice ban yet from our opponent either, so I'm not even sure if they play it. And here they have Aether Paradise. I don't really know how much that makes a difference. It reduces damage that we do by 30, but we hit for 220 with Meteor Tempest anyways, so uh, it doesn't really make a big difference here. So here we're going to see a Strong Charge. Okay, so we're going to see energy there, and an Abyssal Hand. So maybe they're digging for the Float Stone, but I don't know. Maybe, I'm thinking they aren't going for it just because they could have just promoted Bulu at the beginning of their turn 
if they wanted to attack with a boo this turn anyway, so really not sure what's going on here. So they're going to get down a grass return and then just pass. But our opponent didn't take a knockout, so they're actually still on three prizes, which means we can uh, still have access to things like Beast Ring and stuff like that. Several Beast Ring. Ooh, that is rough. <laughs> no energy left in the deck. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely going to need to use this uh, Solgaleo Prism Star's Radiant Star attack this turn. So I guess we we could go for Pal Pad too before we attack. It seems good. So let's do Guzma for sure and Sycamore. I think that's fine. Just in case of an end. Those are the cards we probably want to see the most at this point. So we'll Radiant Star. And so what do we do? I think we just slap like slide all these just on our dusk mains. And yeah, so no matter what we're we can win because even if our opponent Guzma is up something else for some reason, we have Guzma to take a knockout on whatever GX they have in play. So this should be checkmate, but I don't know, maybe our opponent has something else that I might not be considering, but I think we have the game here. So they could be going for like an N off of this Ultra Ball, like going for like a Lele, grabbing N. But here we just get the victory screen. So I guess our opponent may realize, you know what, that the game was pretty much there. Having the two fully powered Dusk Mains meant that uh, they were pretty much guaranteed never to be able to, I think, close out the game. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at this Turbo Dusk Main Necrozma deck. Definitely pretty fun. If I have to be honest, it seems kind of like a diet version of Buzzwell in terms of how the, the deck operates. Buzzwell, I think, is just probably a tad better, but I do think this deck actually is pretty viable. So if you do have your heart set on playing Dusk Main Necrozma, I think this is actually perfectly fine. I think it's actually a pretty solid deck, but... Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you guys can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.